Okay, so this video is going to be going through an example of a heat problem, um, the way that was first introduced in lab. Uh, we have several different printed resources with problems and solutions on them, but when we wanted to make sure that everyone had access to the same sort of fully worked example, um, that's just one more example for us to be able to look back at. To, to make sure that we understand this topic of thinking about how we can transfer heat from one place to another um, with the idea of heat lost equals heat gained. So we have a lot of different ways that we've seen this happen. Uh, we can have copper cups or styrofoam cups. We can have hot water, cold water, ice, no ice. So we're gonna have an example that we probably haven't seen before, but is gonna be using the exact same process that we have with the previous examples that we have done. So we're gonna have 40 grams of ice in a 130 gram copper cup. And they're both gonna be sitting there at zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's the, the current situation. We have this cup with a little tiny chunk of ice, and they're both super cold. Maybe we've had them in our freezer for a while. So we're gonna take them out of the freezer and put them on a table. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add 200 grams of hot water. So we're gonna add 200 grams of water it's going to be pretty hot at 60 degrees Celsius. All right. So already we should think about what's going to happen here. We sort of put in a whole bunch of water. And what we expect is that when all of that kind of comes to a final temperature, we should have in mind the range of temperatures that would be available. So I want you to think about that. And if you want to, you can pause the video. But I want you to think about what the bounds are on what that final temperature is able to be. So we think about it and we realize that that final temperature has to be hotter than zero degrees Celsius, but it has to be colder than 60 degrees Celsius. That'll be a good way for us to check our final answer to see that it makes sense for us. We also have to make sure that we understand that we are assuming that there's no heat being lost from the system. Um, the way that we've typically phrased that is if there's no heat lost to the surroundings, then our goal is to find the final temperature of the mixture. So we want to figure out the final temperature. So T subscript F. That's our goal. And we know a couple of things. First of all, we know that I means zero degrees is less than T final. It's going to be less than zero degrees Celsius uh, at the end of it too. We also know that all of these numbers that we're given, we have to put into, um, into kilograms. So from our, from our book, from our equation sheets, we know that 1,000 grams is in one kilogram. And that's going to help us make sure that we know that the mass of the ice 40 grams divided by 1,000 is 0 0.04 kilograms. The mass of the copper, so M, and I'm going to use Cu, that's the um, atomic element symbol for copper. The mass of the copper is 130 grams divided by 1,000 is 0 0.13 kilograms. And the mass of the hot water is 200 grams. So I'm going to say M hot so that we know that it's the hot water. 200 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.2 kilograms. So we have all of that information. What we also have is that we know what the um, equations are for these different ideas of heat. So these are ones that you can look up in the um, lab handout, in the um, additional resources, um, as well as they'll be on the equation sheets when we need to use them. So we have our setup, we have our numbers for this particular problem here. And our big idea, the big idea that we want to have in mind, and let me switch colors so that we can really make sure we um, see it here, is that 
When we set this up, there's lots of different ways we could. That doesn't really look like a different color, but that's okay. The heat gained, we use Q for heat. The heat gained is equal to the amount of heat lost. So when we set it up like this, when we set it up like this, what we mean then is that the amount of heat gained in possibly different sources is equal to the amount of heat lost, also possibly in different sources. One of the easiest ways that we can try to think about this is for all of the heat gained terms, those are terms where if that situation was happening on a stovetop, it would go faster. And all of those heat lost terms are ones that wouldn't be able to happen if they were happening on a stovetop, or at the very least, they would go slower. So for example, if we think about this situation, the ice is going to melt. Ice will melt faster if you put it on a stovetop. And so that's going to be a situation where the heat gained um, by that ice melting is going to be on that side. Then the ice that turned into cold water, that cold water is going to warm up. And that also goes faster if you put it on a stovetop, so that's a heat gained term. The copper cup is currently very cold. It's going to warm up. That would go faster if you put it on a stovetop. That's a heat gained term also. And then our last one is um, the hot water that we put in at 60 degrees Celsius. That's going to cool down. That process would go slower if we had a um, if we had it on a stovetop, and it might even warm up if we had it on a stovetop. So we know that that can't be um, a Q gained term. So the hot water cooling is a, is a heat lost term. So we can write that out initially in um, in idea. So for Q gained, we have the ice melting. We have the ice water warming. We have the copper cup warming. And those are all of the places where we gain heat. Those things are all going to gain heat. Now the only term then that we have left is the hot water cooling. And so we see that unlike some of our situations, which have have one on one side, one on the other, or two on one side, two on the other, a couple of times we've had two and two, this particular situation has three different places where heat is gained and only one where heat is lost. And that's perfectly fine. Every heat situation will be slightly different. We don't want to treat them like um, kind of cookie cutter examples. We want to think about the situation of where are we gaining energy in the form of heat, and where are we losing energy in the form of heat? Okay, so if we look at the actual equations then for each of these terms, what we have is that for ice melting, it's the mass of ice times this um, latent heat idea, so LF. Then we have the water warming, so the mass of that ice water times the C, and I'm going to put H2O, because that's water, delta T. Okay. We have the copper cup warming, so that's going to be mass of the copper, times the C of copper, Cu, delta T. And then we're going to have the hot water cooling. So it's the mass of the hot water, as we labeled it. It's still water, though and then we have delta T. However, the way that we set this up, since we're looking at the amounts of heat, each time that we specify what delta T is, we have to make that delta T a positive number, which means we need to take the big temperature minus the small temperature, with our understanding of what T final should look like. What that means then is over here where the ice water is warming up, the final temperature minus zero will be what we put for delta T. Over here, the final temperature minus zero for the copper cup warming up. But then really important for the hot water, the hot water started at a bigger number, 60 degrees Celsius, and will be cooling down. And so we'll have 60 minus T final. 
Okay, so we'll put in these numbers. We have 0 0.04 times 334,000. Okay, big numbers. We have 0 0.04 times 4186. And these numbers, by the way, for L and for C, those are numbers we can look up or that we would have provided to us. And then that delta T is T final minus zero. Okay, we have the mass of copper, so 0 0.13. The C of copper is 387. And then we have TF minus zero. That's the whole left side. That's the whole left side. And then all of that is equal to the mass of hot water, so 0 0.2 times our 4186. And then this is really important, it's 60 minus TF. And that's our, um, that's our right side. So the, one of the most common mistakes is we put the um, T final always first because we are used to thinking about this idea of delta as final minus initial which is perfectly valid, but that's when we aren't setting everything to be positive terms. So that's the thing that kind of trips up students the most often, and so I just want to make sure that we recognize that. If we need to kind of rewind and, and listen again to the explanation, that's perfectly fine. That's one of the nice things about a video. Okay, so then when we plug in numbers, when we do all of this in our calculators, and I'm going to kind of assume that we can handle doing some of these steps uh, on our own. What we're going to get is on the, um, on the left side here, we have 1, 3, 3, 6, 0, plus 167.5 T final, plus 50.3 T final, so those were all of the things on the left side because this stuff times zero is zero. And then on the right side, we have um, 50232. That's all of these times the 60, but all of these also have to be times the minus TF. So then that's minus 837.2 TF. Okay, so now the last thing that we have to do is get all of the T finals over onto one side and all of the numbers that don't have T final onto the other. So with that step then, what we end up with is we have, and I'm gonna lose a little bit of space here, but we have 1,055 T final is equal to 336, 1,872. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides by um, 1055. And it might not show up on the screen, but that's what we're doing. We're dividing by 1055. Almost out of space. And what we end up with as our final answer, and there's not really a good place to put it, but our final answer here is T final is equal to 35 degrees, 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if we think about what we've done then in this problem, and it looks like a lot now, but that's one of the nice things about the video is you can rewind it until it was almost empty board. In this problem, the first thing we did was we thought about what was going on. We decided what it was likely going to be the final temperature, that it had to be more um, temperature value, a higher temperature value than our small number, but a smaller temperature value than our big number. So between zero degrees Celsius, our cold value, and 60 degrees Celsius, our hot value. We made sure that we knew that all of the masses have to be kilograms for all of the units to work out here. And then we decided, and this was one of the tougher things, what terms are involved when we think about for this particular situation, how much energy um, we're gaining, what kind of energy gained terms we're going to have, heat gained, and what temperatures or what 
um, terms are going to have uh, energy lost or heat lost. Once we did that, we could then turn to our equation set, our equation sheets, and decide what that actually looked like as an equation form. So that was this step here, the first kind of pinkish one. Then we plugged in numbers right away uh, and almost ran out of space going across. Then as we started to simplify, we realized that we needed all of the T final terms, all of the terms that were attached to TF to be on one side, kind of like 2x plus 3x plus 5x, that kind of thing. And all of the terms that didn't have T final on the other side so that we could solve for that final temperature. And then in our last step of making sure the number makes sense, we realized that 35 is indeed between 0 and 60 degrees. So everything seems to be working out OK. If you have any questions, you always have access to your instructors, um, both for lecture and for lab, to talk about this. Uh, and hopefully you find this along with, as I mentioned before, our other printed resources or um, PDF resources we hope that you find those helpful as well. So I'll um, end the video with me off screen so that you can pause it and, and look through everything if you need to. Uh, and thanks for listening.